Welcome to the Living Spiritfully Podcast, Come Alive Edition. Here are your hosts for today, Paul Galoro and Catherine Stilo. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to see you. I feel like since the last time I saw you, just... I, I ran a marathon. I uh, got the shit kicked out of me. I crawled out of like, you know, I just I feel like so much has happened since we've last seen each other. It was lovely. This We had a, a, a brief little catch up, but I feel like we have to have a whole weekend catch up based on just coming out of eclipse season and all of that. Um, so much has happened. Oh my gosh, so much okay. has so many shifts, right? Yeah. Oh. Well, eclipse season is is major shifts that happen, mm -hmm. right? And what's interesting, because usually eclipse season, <laughs> here we are, we're just jumping right in. Welcome, everybody. But eclipse season usually happens on opposite signs. So if, if the first eclipse is in, let's say, uh, Scorpio, the uh, other eclipse would be in the opposite sign of Scorpio, which is Taurus. But this particular eclipse the first eclipse, the lunar, the, excuse me, the solar eclipse happened in Libra, which the opposite of Libra is, uh, what's after Scorpio, uh, Sag. And, uh, but it didn't happen that way. We had the second eclipse in Scorpio, which the opposite would have been Taurus. Uh, excuse me, other way around. The second eclipse was in, was a lunar eclipse in Taurus which the opposite was is Scorpio. So um, it's it's almost like it was straddling these two different sides. And that's what I felt like as well. I felt kind of like in the last few weeks, I was straddling these two parts of myself. Mm. One part was kind of tipping back into the old way that was, I just didn't, I don't feel, I didn't, that old way doesn't serve me anymore. It served me at one point and it didn't, wasn't feeling good. And I felt like I was kind of tipping back into that place and away from where, it felt good. And now I, I feel like I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting my feet under myself again. Yeah. If any of this means anything to anybody that's listening, but all of that to say, hi. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it, everything that you just said, um, not surprising. I'm feeling on this end too, um, different details uh, mm -hmm. because our lives are different, same energies. Um, and, and wow, okay, so first, I'm going to say, it's not surprising that you feel like this, and anybody who's just listening and doesn't have the visual, I'm doing the, like, <laughs> hand spinning in the air, um, because for, okay, first, it's our 45th episode. Yay! Yay. Congratulations! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, for anybody who didn't hear our last come alive, we were joking because we were noting the 41st episode and it was just kind of like randomly it's 41, but we were saying celebrate every moment. Now we really have sort of what is commonly noted as a milestone of 45. Hmm. And the, but the reason I, why I really want to take a moment to appreciate this is because the, like, I don't know if people listening realize that this it's Paul that does, <laughs> it's Paul that does this. there's no production crew. There's no editor. There's no, you know, uh, not anyway, not yet. There's no sponsor, not, and all of these yeah. are not yet. Yeah. There's not yet a crew. There's not yet an editor. They're not yet a sponsor. So right at this moment, it is Paul dedicating his time. Like un, un I'm going to say uncompensated, but in the, in the, common way of thinking of compensation right. like there's right, right. no money exchange um but the compensation is like from the passion and from the heart and from the the what gets rippled out into the world and that is the really important thing as we move into these new energies is is what's created what vibrations are created out into the world because they come back so mm -hmm. um you know this is your passion this is your passion project and and i'm i'm there too because i feel just as as passionate and mm -hmm. that's why you know we're creating anyway yeah. happy 45 <laughs> thank <So> you <laughs> <laughs> um, if i can if i could just add i know you have do you, you have more to add if i could just say one Keep thing about thank you and also it, it it is me like i'm the editor i'm the, putting that out on the socials and everything 
but it's also a collaboration. You are just as much a part of this as I am, because I, I mean, I couldn't have a conversation <laughs> with just me. So you're there. Also, Claudia Miko and uh, all of our correspondents on the episode where, you know, Crystal Eves and Pat Rennie and Jackie are there. So it is a joint effort. But I mean, once we're done recording, then I, you know, go into my little cave and I do all the thing to spread it out into the world. So yes, yeah. you're you're the b behind the scenes of all of this is yeah. Paul. <laughs> it is Paul Edit. And thank you to everybody because it, I'm so uh, excited that this podcast that started out is well, you it started as your heart to heart, then it became yeah. heart to heart and come alive, and then it became it just grew. So it's yeah. growing, and this is very exciting. So yeah. that's part of all these energies. And then the other thing that I heard you say was about dancing between like my old self and my new self. And I didn't really know, well, isn't that kind of what we're going to talk about? Are we, because mm -hmm. we're, we're very unscripted today. So <laughs> buckle up everyone. Cause this, we're like, this is where we end up, you know, in, in the ether in outer Lord space, knows where. buckle up. So we're all going to buckle up, but, but we kind of talked about what we, what we're going to touch on today or what what we're feeling is in our hearts today and mm -hmm. and it's about scorpio season absolutely you know um i and i still i i'm, I'm i've been taking my classes this week to kind of um uh, uh kind of work this idea out in my head or out loud but you know we had halloween and uh okay so let's just talk about it for a second love that you know adult halloween it's the weekend closest to actual halloween um i really sunk into it today uh, today this year and um you know I, I i i was i stayed in the city at a friend's place i was teaching in the city so i often stay at her place when i do um, and, uh, I went to work out at her studio and we dressed up and she dressed up as, uh, Lydia from Beetlejuice and I dressed up. I mean, I honestly, I didn't have a costume. So I went into her tickle trunk and I grabbed a wig and a, I was a, uh, eighties hairband rock star. I had a, a blow up, uh, guitar. It was super fun. Um, my friend Alicia, she does the voiceover that welcomes the show or opens the show. Uh, and then that night. It was myself, her, and her husband. The three of us watched scary movies. And I'm not one for scary movies. Now, I don't like movies about, like, paranormal or, you know, ghosts and stuff like that. But I love the Scream franchise. Have you seen Scream 6? I have not seen any of the Screams because I, like you, am not for scary movies. <laughs> not for oh Catherine. <laughs> They're rated not for Catherine. Well, okay. So this, I, you know, I, like I said, I'm not for ghosts and stuff, but I don't mind watching somebody get stabbed in the face repeatedly. I don't know what it is. It's maybe my Scorpio tendencies, my sun and moon, uh, sorry, my uh, moon and my rising both in Scorpio. But I, um, so this particular weekend, we had the lunar eclipse so full moon on the Saturday plus an eclipse. So already full moons are about gratitude and release and eclipses are usually like major resets. You know, we opened the show talking about eclipse season and the big changes that come with it. Um, but what I invited my friends to do while we were watching the movie, because we watched two scary movies. The first one was a spoof. It was so funny called The Blackening. Um, it, you know, if, I don't know if you remember the scary movie franchise that there were spoofs of scary movies this was uh, in the similar uh, vein so there was a lot of like hysterical moments um and then we watched scream six and it was the second time that i've seen that i rarely watch movies more than once except like death becomes her and <laughs> under the tuscan sun my two favorite movies um so watch scream six second time and i said to my friends i was like okay it's full moon i wanted to do a a, a a ritual but i was at my friend's place so i couldn't get my cauldron out and all of that stuff so i said while we're watching this film anytime somebody gets stabbed or killed or murdered or whatever, imagine that it's a part of yourself that you're giving up. I said, it's the full moon. So imagine that that person getting stabbed in the throat is, and I should put a trigger warning before this, I'm talking about this a lot. But you know, when, that, when that's happening, think of that part of you that you, it's time to die. 
So I was thinking, okay, oh, that's the part of me that has that, you know, that, that, that thought process that isn't, or that, that belief that isn't uh, serving me anymore. That's what's getting killed off right there. And in that moment, that's that bad habit that, you know, I, I don't, that's, you know, my judgmental side. And, and so I was just thinking of all of the way, like all of the parts of myself, because, you know, we talk about this in yoga. Um, where we are to die to the old ways of being so that we can be reborn. You know, we talk about Shavasana, corpse pose at the end. We die to our old self so that we can be reborn however we want to be reborn. And so I really like leaned into that and I started talking about it on the class that I taught on Sunday and then Tuesdays classes. There's, and people were like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, what's wrong with Paul? And I was just like really embracing Scorpio season. Although Scorpio season isn't exactly about death, there is an element of this transformative aspect because the cycle of creation is birth, life, death, rebirth. And so we have Halloween, after Halloween, we have the Day of the Dead. You know, the, there's the big festival in Mexico where they they observe that. Um, so 31st Halloween, first Day of the Dead, and then on the second is All Souls Day. And although these three are three different cultures are celebrating, but they're all celebrating, celebrating, observing this um, part of the creation cycle, which is death. Mm -hmm. But what really, like, I've noticed it for a while, but this year really hit me that it left me like a moment of pause is how quickly we go from Halloween, literal zombies all over the place to the next day. It's uh, Santa Clauses and candy canes and bells ringing and stuff like that. And it just makes me think like we haven't we we lit the thing literally just died on the 31st. Mm -hmm. And already we're trying to go into joy. We bypass that process of grieving mm -hmm. that which has died. And, you know, every day we die, we go to sleep, we wake up. And I'm not saying we have to grieve that death every single day, but when it's those big things like our dreams, mm -hmm. the things that we hoped for that for whatever reason can no longer be, mm -hmm. we need to grieve that part. Yeah. But it just seems like as a society, we 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 immediately want to go from 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 the death to the joy and it, it really made me think of a lot of things and one thing in particular and thank you for letting me just kind of get all these words out um i i i remember a few years ago a friend had uh well a friend client former colleague you know somebody that was in my life not very close to but i was very you know involved in this person's life at one point um, had texted me randomly one day out of the blue and they said, Hey, you know, um, do you do Reiki? And I said, yes. And at the time I was, and, and, uh, they said, well, you know, um, my mom died and somebody said that if I do Reiki, it'll help me get over it. And I said, okay, hold on a second. When was that? And they're like, oh, it was just a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, okay, I did not knowing what I know about the process of life and the process of death and grieving and all of that, I didn't feel right being part of that because there needed to be a grieving process and especially losing someone like your mother. I don't, that's not something that we're going to get over in two weeks, three weeks. And yes, there's, there's a process to, to go through the grieving process, but it, it, it seemed like they were looking to just bypass all of that and go into the next thing, but it can, it will never be unicorns and rainbows again mm -hmm. because your life is completely transformed. Mm -hmm. One day you have your mom there, the next day you don't, we mm -hmm. can't just pass over it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was thinking about that as well, because that was also a big aha moment for me where it was like, how quickly, you know, and, and I'm not saying about that person. I'm just saying that's how like typical is that, right? We break up with somebody immediately. We got to go out and like feel better about ourselves and get over it. It's like sometimes it, it's not, a, it's not about getting over. It. It's about going through it and coming out on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where my mind has been at because I, I, yeah, I just feel like as a society, we're bypassing that grieving process, which is such a, like, there's so much 
to be experienced in there and so much to be learned in that grieving process that if we don't go through it and if we don't allow it to sink in, we're going to miss all of the human stuff that comes out of that. Yeah. Uh, there's so much richness in that. Um, first, I love that you turn everything into a ritual. Like, <laughs> you, like even what, no, but I'm, I'm like, yeah. I say that, I say that in a very honoring way because yeah. everything is a ritual. Like, like, we have to let this thing go of like, I have to take an hour at sunrise and I have to sit in lotus position and silence and like light my, like, and light my candles and incense. Cause you know what? Hey, that's fantastic. If we mm -hmm. can do that every day, that's fantastic. But Hey, this is life. And we have to live our meditation. We have to live yeah. our rituals, right? So the fact that you were like, okay, scary movie, I'm watching it. That's where I'm going to do my ritual. I mean, like drinking a glass of water is like saying, let this cleanse me, let this be the, you know, the source and light every cell of my body. Like mm -hmm. these little things can be rituals as we go along. So that's, that was the first thing that I was kind of chuckling at. And then we, I mean, you talk about, we, we go from Halloween and then right to Christmas. Oh my God, Paul, I was in some stores and the Christmas decorations are like right alongside the Halloween decorations. I'm like, like we don't even let one happen <laughs> right? <laughs> before we're in the next one. Right. Yeah. So, so this is, this is like, you're right that there is, there is something to this. And I think um, when I did learn about the cycle of creation in the the uh, kind of spiritual studies mostly were the yogic studies but they're they're in a lot of spiritual traditions these mm -hmm. idea this idea about the process is birth sustaining transformation it's not labeled death but yes something falls away but something comes out of it again so mm -hmm. um i think that this tendency to to leap is because we're we're afraid of death because we we only have been conditioned to see the loss in it mm -hmm. and not recognize that it's not just a loss. Yes, there's a component that is lost or dies away. On the other side of that is newness. And yes, you know what? It, it won't be the same unicorns and rainbows that was in that way. It will be unicorns and rainbows in a different way. In a different so, way, yeah. So there's, there's all of that. Um, there's all of that in there. And, mm -hmm. and I think it's a, a, a delicate balance because um, the gr grieving can be a bit of a trap, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a, there's, well, there's the tendency to bypass and leap right over it and not feel it, just bury it somewhere, or forget about it, deny it, whatever, whatever it is that we're doing with it. But there's also we also can't get stuck in it. Mm -hmm. So it's giving this, this time some breathing room so that, and, and, and enough time and space and grace that we're not leaping right over it. And also that we're not wallowing and, and stuck in it. So all yes. of, all of that came to mind as, as I was listening. I, I love that. And I love that you're bringing that up. And, um, you know, in A Course in Miracles, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, Christian symbolism in there. And it talks a lot about the crucifixion and the resurrection. And so the crucifixion, and when we harp on the crucifixion, and when I say, I'm using this just as to, to illustrate the idea, but there's so many other ways that this can, that this can be uh, 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 illustrated. But if we harp on the crucifixion, this is... This is the, this is what killed me, or this is what harmed me, or this is what hurt me. If we, if we harp on that, we're going to be stuck on that. But what A Course in Miracles says is that the crucifixion did happen. We have to look at it. We have to say, yes, that, that big transformation, that big change happened. But three days later, in that period of grace, was the resurrection. So we can look at the crucifixion but not harp on it, but we have to get to the resurrection. The resurrection is the rebirth, right? And there's a reason why there's that three-day period is so that we can go through that grief. Now, in reality, so that's, that's a story that allows us to visualize this idea of, okay, transformation happens, change happens. We got to go through a period of darkness, a period of grief 
to get to the resurrection, to come out of it on the other side. And then that moment happens and we are enlightened. You know, the, the idea of the Christ resurrecting is this image of us now coming even more so as our true self, as our bright light. Um, but we can't bypass that middle bit because we'll never get to the rebirth if we don't acknowledge the, 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 the death in the middle there. You know, even um, if we bring it into something a little bit more uh, 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 universal, the winter solstice. The winter solstice in some uh, uh, cultures is seen as the death of the sun, and S-U-N, sun, because the sun goes down, it's on the lowest point in the horizon, and it actually stays in that lowest point on the horizon for three days before the sun starts to rise again. But the best part of that is that the sun doesn't, the, the, the sun, the light, doesn't come back the way we think. Because if you actually track, because what we do in a rise is we track the sunrise and the sunset every single day. And when it comes to the winter solstice, you start to see that the sun continues coming up. It continues to come up later and later. So the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, even the, I think it's the 9th of January, the sun is still coming up one minute later than it did the day before. But what happens is it sets later. So we still have that increase in, in light, but it's not where we think it is. The sun doesn't come up later. It just sticks around a little bit later. And then the sun starts to rise up higher in the sky and we make our way to the summer solstice, which is the celebration of all the light, right? So that's really interesting. That is very symbolic. Right? That's like super symbolic. Yeah. 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 Because because there are things that need to die in order for our light to shine. Mm -hmm. There, yeah. there are, there is, there's no way that we can be um, a, a new version of ourselves. If we don't let that old part die, if we don't let old stories fall away. And I mean, the first step is, is, uh, recognizing where those stories are. And then the next step is being willing to let go of them because mm -hmm. often our ego identities are so attached to those things that they're so much a part of ourselves that letting them go is, and, and I think this is part of the, the fear of death is like letting them go is a total deconstruction of who we are as a person, as in this world, who we're, all these things that we've built what we call our life around, mm -hmm. um, you know, letting those, letting those fall into darkness and then, and that only to come back to light and life, um, it, it's going to be a totally different transformation. So yes, right. something has fallen away, but something, something greater, something brighter, is there and mm -hmm. and yeah you know what it, it causes changes it causes things to ripple but but there are things that need to die yeah totally and it's and we we see this life and death uh you know the whole cycle of creation in our seasons even right as we talk in come alive we're always looking at the symbolism in the seasons itself in fall in autumn which we are in right now scorpio season is right in the middle of that and scorpio is a fixed sign so it sustains that energy of what it is um you know uh, in autumn th the, the leaves start to dry up and they fall off and it appears as though the trees are dying the trees aren't really dying they're just turning their resources inward and focusing on the inside and the root system so all of the resources pull in takes care of themselves they slow down the trees go to sleep and then all of a sudden the light comes back it start the light starts getting longer and longer the trees start to wake up and they're all of a sudden they're like oh i'm alive again oh look at these leaves that i'm producing again all of a sudden and there's that period of joy and celebration and the sun and you know all the fruit that comes with the trees as they blossom and everything and then again it goes through that whole stage at some point the tree knows okay i had the best time with these leaves it's time to let them go it's time to draw inward it's time to take it to, to go to sleep and then come back to life mm -hmm. later. And so 
it really is apparent in everything. And if, and that's why I, 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 I can't harp on this enough. And, you know, as Scorpio, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep on hitting, hitting the message there until people start to feel it. But we really need to let that happen and not just move to the next thing. I'm not saying don't celebrate Christmas and don't have fun. I'm just saying, you know, stick around with the, the, the death for a moment, stick around with the change, stick around with the feelings that come with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause even if we think about, um, like how my, my, my child self has died and my teen self has died and my mm -hmm. early adulthood self has died mm -hmm. in a sense that it then just transformed into something else. And there, there are periods where I remember at some points in my twenties feeling a certain way and not knowing until much later and doing that inner work that, Oh, I was actually grieving the loss of being, uh, you know, uh, carefree child and a, a teenager that was really just like figuring out life. And I, I didn't get to, I didn't really grieve that. Then, you know, going into adulthood and having all of these like feelings about stuff and not knowing, or even like where uh, in some cases where really traumatic things happen to us and thinking we just got to get over it. But really we need that moment to even grieve the loss of that part of ourselves, the loss of our innocence or the loss of that part of us that had never gone through something like that before. And now all of a sudden had to, mm -hmm. um, so it really, yeah, it just, I just wish that we gave ourselves the chance because I think, I think we would be a lot nicer to each other because we would understand what it feels like to go through that. And I'm not saying everybody like does, nobody understands it. You know, if somebody says, Oh, you know, uh, I lost a loved one. People get it. They're like, Oh, I'm sorry. But then sometimes we also think like, well, you know, it's been six weeks. You should get over it by now. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, but mm -hmm. I, I can't, or even in relationships, you know, when, when you break up with someone, you're not just grieving the loss of that person in your life. You're grieving the loss of the life you were, planning in your head to have with that person. Mm -hmm. You're grieving the loss of the, the future that you could have had together. You're grieving the loss of the lessons you could have learned together. And yes, those are going to come up in other ways, right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we still have this curriculum that we need to go. And in A Course in Miracles, we say, um, you don't get to choose the curriculum. You don't get to choose the lessons, but you get to choose how you learn those lessons. Is it through suffering or through joy? Mm -hmm. And if we learn them through suffering, it's because we're harping on the crucifixion. But if we lose them through, if we learn them through joy, then we know we're focusing on the resurrection in that, in that case. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are words. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to grieve that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh gosh. I have so many places to go with Please that. go. I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like I'm uh, monopolizing this conversation. Oh gosh. No, this is so rich. And uh, part of um, not knowing which direction to go is because there's just so many, um, so many thoughts and feelings that came up. So um, the first is kind of the strongest is um in ancient cultures, it, it, there were rituals, there were rites of passage that allowed these transitions in life. So from childhood to adulthood, from single to um, in a bond, in some sort of bond. Um, and yes, I mean, we, yes, we still have things that we do. It's, I, I think that there, it was a little bit different because, because I think the whole community came around the, the celebration rather than um, in, in our society today, it's more, it's, it's a little more individualized. It's like the individual family unit is celebrating, mm -hmm. but it's not, not, not always. I, I, I don't want to speak in generalizations because there's always, you know, some communities that still uphold these, but I think it was it was on a broader scale, these, these rituals, these ceremonies, um, right. These rites of passage were woven into, I'm going to say everyday life. Like, so, so that's kind of what we're seeing is, is a, a loss of, of that in, in our culture. And, and 
we, we live in a culture that doesn't like you, you talked about the trees and how the trees go inward to nurture themselves. And that's really, um, what, what grieving is it's going inward to draw on your own resources, to examine all these things. And we don't do that in our culture. And we're, it's almost not, um, not only is it not prized and valued, it's kind of frowned upon, like, mm -hmm. right. It's like the time to go inward and examine and, and be in there where we keep ourselves busy. And I say we, because I watch myself do it too, even though I know, percent, yeah. right. Like I know I've studied, I've learned, but there are times where it's like, wow, you know what? I'm doing this just to keep myself busy so that I don't have to sit with these uncomfortable feelings. So there's a lot of that, 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 um, happens. And I think, I think I'm kind of skirting around something that I think that I, um, want to express. And I think the reason I'm holding back and expressing it is that, um, it's, it's at a very personal level and I'm not, I haven't fully processed it, but, um, recently, um, I just learned of, uh, the, the loss of a, a, a friend of mine, um, from way back, like decades, like I haven't spoken to this person and I learned of, uh, this person's passing mm. and we had a relationship at one point and it was, uh, it was kind of a dramatic, tumultuous up and down relationship. And, and it ended not in the way that I wanted it to end. Um, and, and that landing with me, um, was, it was interesting. Cause first of all, when I learned of it, it felt like a complete stranger. It felt like I was hearing about a stranger passing because it, it had no, I was, I just felt numb. There, there was no effect because I haven't seen this person in probably oh, well over two decades. Um, so it, it was, it was like, it was a stranger. And mm. then, and then it, ha and then it shifted into this moment of like a, that movie sliding doors. Mm. Great movie. It, it shifted into that where it was like, wow. Okay. So it was painful then if things had gone a different way, it would be painful. Like it would be painful now where there's pain. There is always going to be pain. That's mm -hmm. the nature of that relationship. So I was like, I had this moment of like, Ooh, isn't this, isn't this really interesting. And then I just had this moment of like feeling sad, like feeling, feeling sad. Cause here's this person that I once knew that is no longer with us. And even though I haven't seen this person, it, this person was on the earth yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and in some way, in some other life. And, but it, it, it just felt like different lives. And then, it, and then it came to the, the trip down memory lane and remembering. Mm -hmm. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, like, yes, yes. That like all of the, the happy moments and the excitement. And I started, and then I came like kind of around and was, was like, this existence is a, a blink of an eye. And so what a waste of energy on all those resentments and all those bad feelings and all of the, like, wow. Like I, I was able to be just left with like the, all of that was released. If, even if there was just a little bit of resentment or bad feeling left, it completely cleared. And I was left with, wow, like what, how fortunate was I to have been in those moments of celebration and joy. And I was just left with, with like happiness and celebration of a life well lived and, and mm -hmm. what a, what a better place this world was for having that person in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So can, if you don't mind, can I, I, I would like to ask you something and answer it if you, how mm -hmm. you feel comfortable, if you feel comfortable, because I had a similar experience. Um, somebody that I knew in high school had passed uh, five years ago or so now. And we were, we were friends in high school. And then, you know, through college, and one goes to this university, the other goes, and we kind of like drifted apart. And I would see them every now and then. Uh, and then they passed and it brought me back to some experiences that I didn't quite fully deal with 
that were related but also unrelated but came from that period in my life and it was almost like their passing allowed me to process some of those things that i that were unfinished so to speak mm -hmm. and have that moment because i remember like it really hit me and and i didn't have like the the people that were in my life at that point when it had happened were not in my life back then so they didn't know the experience and they didn't have a similar thing so i couldn't really grieve with them i had to grieve on my own with that um and it was just uh yeah it was just really interesting to see how the death of them even though it wasn't like it, it had no effect on me and that's not the word not that it didn't have an effect on me but just how it brought up it would like unearthed all of this stuff that I thought was stuffed down, which is very much Scorpio. Mm -hmm. um, and actually it happened around, because I remember it was Halloween, mm -hmm. uh, was the viewing uh, years ago. So it happened in Scorpio season, yeah. this. So it had unearthed a lot of stuff that was that I had stuffed down underneath that I didn't want to look at, that it had to come up. And, you know, they say when something comes up, it's coming up to be looked at, to be released. So um, does w was that similar to your experience? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. There was, I, I was able to let go of like the heaviness of it Yeah. and, and just let it, let that clear and just, and, and it wasn't, I didn't really do anything consciously to do that. It just, it just shifted. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do have people in my life who now who were also in my life at that time. So the, mm -hmm. uh, like friends of 30 years, yeah. um, who know, know the situation and, and, um, you know, it was like, it, it was just the trip down memory lane was, was, um, a really of, of able to shine a light on it where before it had, it had been kind of a dark and light. Like I, like I would, I would dance in the good memories. Well, actually that's even not true. Um, I would mostly dance in the, in the, well, like this person, uh, like the victim part of it. Right. Like, <laughs> but I was getting better over the years of not, not framing it like that and understanding what part I played in it and understanding like we're, we're all energy, actually the movie, um, Cloud Atlas, have you ever? Oh read? my God, yes. I forgot about that movie. So the other day I started watching it and it's about, for anybody who hasn't seen Cloud Atlas, it's about, um, uh, how do we frame this? Like past lives, intertwined lives, future lives, like mm -hmm. like just realizing that that this dance is, we're all interconnected. We're all energy and we're all interconnected. And if we're intersecting now in this life, then we've intersected in a past life. We're intersecting in future lives, like in, in other in dimensions, other, like yeah. other dimensions, other versions of, of, you know, the multiverse. Yeah. Um, and, and I know, I know, I, I know <laughs> some people listening might be like, Oh my God, you just lost me because that's like all <laughs> not true and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I, I can't prove it, but I can prove, like, I can prove yeah. it if I really got into the details about how I could prove to you that it's yeah. true. But in my experience, there are so many things that happen that I can no longer doubt that, right. that it's, it, there isn't some truth to it. Yeah. Um, well, you know how I see like other dimensions and stuff like that is, um, other possibilities in our mind. Mm -hmm. So this is our reality, you and I right now having this conversation. Yes. But then like, cause I'm just thinking cloud Atlas, there are some things that seem to happen like in, in one era and then in another part of the world and then in like a, another planet even. Yeah. So I, the, I see those as like other possibilities in our mind mm -hmm. that even, cause you know, yes, you and I have our relationship, but when we're not together, you have a relationship with me. I have a relationship with you and they're different than when we come together. And so that's like a whole other, yeah. to me, another form of our relationship yeah. in another realm, so to speak. Yeah. But anyways, now I just lost other people even more because 
<laughs> not only or every- not, or maybe people are getting the blanks filled in now because yeah. it's maybe. like, oh, no, I get it. But, <laughs> but I, I think uh, uh, that's a great way to look at it. And I also um, think of it as a radio dial. So the same as yeah. like, I put I put on one radio and I'm and you talked about the the eighties rock like the, I'm totally yeah. woo-hoo, like I, <laughs> <laughs> Panama yeah, Def Leppard Kiss like all of that yeah. um, I'm total eighties hairband girl but um, you've got that station but then at the same time I can flick to a country station I can flick to uh, classical music I can flick to talk radio. And it's not that those other things aren't existing. They're all going on at the same time. It's just that my frequency, my dial is tuned into this. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- when I heard that description of it, I'm like, oh, I get it. And that ties in with your description of like, you go off and you live a whole different life that I don't know about, which is essentially like a whole different life than I'm involved in. But then mm-hmm. I have my life, which is a whole different life than you're involved in, but then we intersect. So it's the intersections, but it goes back to that phrase about everything is happening in the eternal now. Like these are all things that are happening now. There is, there is only one, there is only one energy and it's, it's the expressions now. And if you said, well, Catherine, why is it that I'm like, right now tuned into this I, I have no idea <laughs> so, like I don't know how to t- well actually yeah. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually studying to how to tune in those to other dimensions so I've, nice. I've got a got a mentor that that is helping me with that but yeah uh, to consciously tune into that stuff wow. but this is I mean this is all part of like well and it and it, it I was like this has nothing to do with our conversation but it does but it has everything to it do has with everything to do with our conversation because it's nothing ever dies Mm-hmm. right yeah. nothing ever dies so take the time to be in the time to process and to grieve because nothing ever dies no. everything uh, everything is so- becomes something else in, in our in our episode um way back from season one of come alive in in the episode six produce no waste your phrase was everything is food for something else mm-hmm. so all these energies don't die they just shift form yeah. and and they become they become something else they, they fuel something else they fertilize something else absolutely absolutely in a course in miracles and i've been talking a lot about it lately so i need to revisit that but in a course in miracles it says um death is not an end it's a continuation mm-hmm it just transforms into something else, right? So when we look at the end of a relationship, yes, that relationship is no longer, but we transform into another version that is carrying the lessons of that with us. Um, You know, our relationship with somebody that passes, no longer do we have them in the physical form, but we do have them now in a different way we have them in our memory somehow we can have conversations with them we can hear them in the leaves we can you know see them in other living beings we can carry them within ourselves by honoring them and maybe behaving in in like you Mm -hmm. know sometimes uh, you see somebody behave a certain way you're like oh that reminds me of so and so um Mm -hmm. i mean an aunt of mine passed away Uh, many, many years ago. And anytime I hear Abba, I think of her, Uh right? Because I know she's there. And Abba plays randomly sometimes in like places where I'm like, whoa, there's no way. And I just know that that's her being like, hey, Paul. Mm -hmm. That's just saying hi. So uh, yeah, it's not an end. It's a continuation in a different way. It's a transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have this book, I, I, cause I'm, I'm being mindful of the time. And, uh, to be honest, I don't even know how long we've been in this realm that we've been talking about, but there's a book here. Um, Pixie Light Horse is someone, someone introduced me to this. Uh, do you know Pixie? I, I have heard of Pixie Light Horse. Yes. She's yeah. wonderful. I have many of her books and I think they're wonderful. This one is prayers of honoring grief and in the intro i'm just going to read some of the things that uh, as 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 i was sitting to have this conversation with you i pulled it out and there were some things that kind of like popped out at me she says this grief deserves your resources just as fun and joy deserve their place in your vast 
cosmology of emotions, it is worthwhile to make time and space for sifting through the hurts and healing them. Strengthening our relationship with grief means making a friend of loss. You may ask, why on earth would anyone want to be friendly with the pain of loss? I suggest it because it is an inevitable part of life. And to, the, uh, to be enemies with loss is to reject part of ourselves. The pain of loss is real, and yet we desire to sweep it away and move on from it. We are routinely cultured to get on with it from an early age, instructed not to waste time lingering in negativity. When the alternative is avoidance, we actually become more fragile, though we are taught to believe the opposite. Grief remains in the systems of the body, informing our lives in subtle and submersive ways in the form of fear, anxiety, and depression. The whole map of our lives changes when grief is stored away silently. It directs our decisions, impairs our uh, impairs or inflates our willingness to take risks, and continues to have its way with us. Toxic, amputated, dishonest, denied, neglected, mutated grief causes disharmony in the body and the spirit. Grief is asking to be brought into community conversations again. The death rituals of traditional peoples are examples for us to be led by. Long ago in, our, in my own indigenous lineage, a lost loved one's body was raised up high upon a scaffold and sung back to the sun for four days and nights. So too can we honor our unfulfilled dreams and desires, our missed opportunities for love, and the depths of our pain, both individual and collective. We can lift, sing, and pray the lost parts of ourselves back home. Oh, I am just yeah. breathing into that because... Yeah. Yeah. That's from Pixie Light Horse. Those were her words. Prayers of Honoring Grief is the book. And the book has a series of prayers um, that honor the different um, stages of grief yeah. and the, the journey that we go on. It is a yeah. lovely, lovely book. And I, uh, you know, take a look at it. And, and if yeah. it's something that speaks to you, pick it up. So. Thank you for sharing that because... Um, I know you mentioned that your, um, the event that you were talking about happened at this time and mine happened at this time. And that from what I've learned in some of the, um, courses that I've taken is this is a very common time for that type of transformation to happen. So there's probably several people who are experiencing this at this time. And even if it's not at this time, um, we know that. I know that in my circle, there's been a lot of loss in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, so the, this is um, something that I think is really helpful. Yeah. 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 So uh, listeners, um, you know, if you're listening to this on YouTube or you're listening to it on Spotify, you can go in there and let us know if there's something that you'd like to share and comment to us. Um, we'd love to hear it. Um, and just remember that this is part of the cycle of life. Yeah. And just as Pixie said, we need to give it space as much as we give space to joy and love. Yeah. And uh, I think grieving is a form of love. It's just a more mm -hmm. internal, introspective um, kind of, of love. So, yeah. And, um, and maybe for our own play, um, we can... Uh, I liked uh, Pixie's words of sing, sing it to the sun, mm. sing it back to the sun yes. and, and feel the joy and the celebration of a life well lived. Yes. Yeah. And, and celebrate the parts that are of ourselves that are coming back to life after. Yeah. Absolutely. And on that note, lovers listeners thank you so much for joining us today just remember we're meant to thrive how do you come alive
The Living Spiritfully podcast is a spiritful production. Executive producer, Paul Galaro. Co-producers, Claudia Miko and Catherine Stilo. A big thank you and much love to you, the Living Spiritfully community, for liking, subscribing, sharing, and supporting this podcast. funny way to end after that <laughs> but that's the whole rebirth thing it's right the whole rebirth yeah 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 yeah